the headlines for this hour on VTV News. National Assembly Standing Committee 34 session opens. And Daklak terror attack aided by foreign based organizations. In our news, UN Security Council adopts a ceasefire resolution aimed in Gaza. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Hello, it's 8 a.m. local time in Hanoi, and you're watching VTV News. Vietnam considered developing a friendship and cooperative tie with China, a strategic choice and a top priority in its foreign policy of independence, self-reliance, diversification, and multilateralization of external relations. This was expressed by State President Tô Lâm to Chinese Ambassador to Vietnam, Xiong Bo, at the reception in Hanoi on June 11th. He emphasized the importance of maintaining regular exchanges between senior leaders of both countries. Vietnam values its traditional friendship with China and stressed the need to preserve and enhance this relationship. On the issue of the EC, State President called for the implementation of agreement and mutual respect for each other's rights and interests, emphasizing adherence to international law, particularly and close, looking ahead to the 75th anniversary of diplomatic ties, the state president urged both sides to elevate their relationship to a more practical and effective level. Ambassador Xiong Bo assured that China is committed to implementing agreements, promoting cooperation and resolving differences, ensuring healthy and stable development of the comprehensive strategic partnership between China and Vietnam. The National Assembly Standing Committees began a three-day sitting in Hanoi on a Tuesday, debating laws recently passed by National Assembly, among other major issues. More on this in the following story. Discussing the law on road traffic order and safety, members of the Standing Committee supported the addition of regulations on student transport to have video recording devices with warning functions to prevent children from being left behind in vehicles. An inspection of school buses must be carried out. All vehicles that do not meet standards will be eliminated. Vehicles that meet standards must be labeled so that they don't abuse their rights as priority vehicles. This is an important issue, so I highly support it. I suggest raising the responsibilities of both educational institutions and transport businesses when transporting children. If we only regulate educational institutions, it is not enough. Transport businesses must also be held responsible for this, and I propose a stricter set of regulations. Regarding a total ban on alcohol consumption for drivers, a zero-tolerance policy, the National Assembly Standing Committee proposed a separate vote with a full explanation in order to create consensus and to make legislation effective. A separate vote is needed to determine whether or not to implement a zero-tolerance policy. Taking votes means respecting democracy and collective opinions. Although most deputies have voiced their support for the total ban, there are some suggesting a drink-driving limit. We must express ourselves by votes. Discussing the draft law on roads, the National Assembly Standing Committee stressed the need to review regulations on land funds for road infrastructure to optimize the development of the country. On June 11th, during a meeting to gather feedback on the draft decrees detailing the implementations of several articles of the land law, Deputy Prime Minister Chen Nong Ha stressed the importance of the document's coherence and consistency. He urged the drafting agency to actively seek input to verify the decrees, ensuring it harmonizes with other legal status to prevent any conflict. Notably, the draft comprising 10 chapters and 114 articles aim to put into effect the provisions of the land law related to decentralization and the allocation of land management responsibility to provincial and district level authorities. 
Furthermore, it introduces revisions and additions to guidelines for categorizing land types, along with principles and criteria for the allocations of land use objectives. The index of industrial production (IIP) in the first five months of this year increased by 6.8 percent compared to the same period last year. According to the General Statistic Office, the index decreased by 2 percent this time last year. This showed a clear sign of recovery in industrial production capacity, as well as positive market signals in the first half of this year. These textiles businesses' output in five months increased by 50 percent compared to the same period last year. The owners are investing in machinery to fulfill the search in orders. We have signed many large orders with partners. The prospects are positive. We're expanding our investment and build another factory in Fuzhou, which is expected to have an output 2.5 times higher than the factory here. Futo is one of the leading localities within the processing and manufacturing industry, which has more than doubled in the past year. FDI Enterprises contribute nearly half of this growth. Futo's achievements are have been fueled by new businesses commencing operations. The industry groups contributing to this increase are mainly in electronics, textiles, paper, and chemicals. 55 out of 63 localities recorded growth in industrial production over the past five months, a result of bustling activities in both exports and imports. The government's solutions to stimulate demand and promote public investment have contributed to improving the production capacity of businesses. FDI disbursement is also a driving force for industrial production. Vietnam's Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index in May reached 50.3 points, showing that business conditions have improved slightly for the second consecutive month, highlighted by increased manufacturing output. Decisions to remove obstacles and connect markets are working effectively, creating great momentum in the second half of the year. In the first five months of the year, fruit exported through border gates in Lakson province increased by nearly 500,000 tons compared to the same period last year. The total export throughput through the Lakson border gates reached nearly 1.2 million tons during this period. Currently, fruit such as lychee, mango, and dragon fruit are given separate vehicles lanes for quick custom clearance. In addition, the green lane mechanism is made available, a priority lane for more than 10 types of fruit being exported to China to ensure faster custom procedures. About 350 trucks carrying fresh fruit, equivalent to more than 4,000 tons, are transported through this province border gates daily. Mekong Delta farmers are applying advanced rice cultivation solutions and technology to reduce input materials and control greenhouse gas emissions and environmental impact in rice production. Along with partners, the National Agricultural Extension Center trains farmers on sustainable rice cultivation methods. After three crops, the results have been rather positive. Arriving at the fields earlier than farmers, this technician measures the temperature of the field, places the gas in a tank, and checks the figures every 10 minutes. We take a 20 milliliters air sample and switch between four syringes. We will then store the air from the fourth syringe. Greenhouse gas emissions are measured regularly once a week, after three crops using the sustainable rice farming model. Greenhouse gas emissions have decreased to 24.7 percent compared to traditional farming. These models will help reduce irrigation water, the amount of seeds used, as well as gas emissions, thereby helping farmers become more resilient in production and crop management against the impact of climate change. The cluster sowing method reduces the amount of rice seeds by threefold. The method of alternating flooding and drying irrigation reduces the amount of water used by 50 percent. These methods have cut input costs by up to 157 US dollars per hectare. After implementing these solutions, we will continue to improve and transfer technology to apply it to a million hectares of high-performance rice, which will reduce farmers' costs and emissions.
Looking at the shape of the rice, we know the yield will be large immediately. The cost of rice cultivation has decreased, and the investment efficiency per hectare of rice area has also increased by 50 percent. With 4,500 farmers in Gantou, Anzang and Kinzang trained in high-quality, sustainable rice cultivation, a million hectares of high-quality, low-emission rice is gradually becoming a reality. Coming up next on Rich News, Dalak terror attack aided by foreign-based organizations. An international play day for children showcases power of play and development. One year ago, on June 11, 2023, an attack in Daklak province shook the whole country, leaving behind its construction for the people in Yatio and Yakutu communes. After an investigation, the Ministry of Public Security determined that there was a terrorist attack aimed against the people's government and was directed and assisted by forces abroad. Some exiled Vietnamese reactionary organizations and extremists have taken advantage of ethnic and religious issues to incite violence and enter Vietnam to direct this terrorist attack. More to follow. When Eban founded a group calling themselves the Gas Soldiers, the group that carried out the terrorist attack in Dak Lak, according to the indictment, since 2017, Huan Eban has been incited by the Montagnier Support Group, or MSGI, an organization established in the U.S. to carry out sabotage activities. According to the police, this organization has the goal of inciting ethnic people to use violence, conduct terrorism, protest, and arm riots, demanding secession and establishment of a separate state in the Central Highlands. Imut Malo is the leader of the MSGI. Yim said we would be enslaved for life unless we do something. He also told me that we must form a military and establish a state. The Montagnier support group also sent members from the U.S. to illegally infiltrate Vietnam to directly participate in the terrorist plan. Imut was the one who sent me back. He said that he wants to reclaim the five central highland provinces by armed conflicts. The reason I returned to Vietnam was to join Huen to establish the Dega state. The Dega Soldiers Group also maintained contact with the Montagnier Stand for Justice, another organization active in the U.S. The Ministry of Public Security affirmed that this organization has held many activities to prepare for terrorist attacks to establish a private state in the Central Highlands. Leader of the Montagnard Support Group directed suspects in Vietnam to strike headquarters of state agencies with few people. He told them to record videos of the attack, the raiding and killing of officers, and send them to him so he can call for more support. In March 2024, the Ministry of Public Security announced that the Montagnier Support Group and the Montagnier Stand for Justice were behind the terrorist attack in Dak Lak that killed nine people and destroyed property worth nearly 100,000 US dollars. With clear evidence of abetting the attack, Two critical ill patients on Chung Sao Spartley Islands have been evacuated to the mainland for urgent medical care. One was a fisherman aboard a fishing vessel suffering from a stroke caused by a cerebral hemorrhage, while the other sustained blunt abdominal trauma and intra-abdominal bleeding due to a level 3 liver rupture from a workplace accident. After consulting with Military Hospital 175 remotely, doctor at the Chiang Sa Island Clinic swiftly arranged for the transfer of both patients to the mainland for emergency treatment. Despite adverse weather conditions, helicopters from the 18th 
Army successfully evacuated to the patients on the night of June 10th. Currently, both individuals are receiving intensive medical care. A significant fire erupted in Cham Chim National Park in Dong Tap Province, a sanctuary for numerous rare bird species. Starting around noon on Tuesday, blades engulfed areas under the Milatica canopy dry grassland and nearby orchards, emitting smoke several meters high. Despite firefighting efforts by Dong Nai provincial authorities and local unit, authorities struggled to put out the fire. The park spanning 7,313 hectares and housing diverse flora and fauna, including 32 rare bird species like the red-crowned crane, faces an extreme fire risk, as indicated by recent assessment despite proactive prevention measures. In celebration of the International Day of Play, a vibrant play day for children was held at the Temple of Literature in Hanoi co-organized by UNICEF Think Playground and Culture and Science Center of Van Mio, the inclusive event designed for children of all backgrounds and ability aimed to emphasize the crucial role of play in children's development. Hundreds of children from varying backgrounds, including those with disabilities and from vulnerable situations, participated with their families. There are many games, but the one I like most is the swing. I can swing high and it is very cool. I feel very happy. The most challenging game for me is throwing cans. To play the can throwing game, we have to concentrate and throw accurately. This is my first time playing the game. I feel very happy. These activities are specifically designed to cater to all age groups and abilities ensuring every child and their parents has the opportunity to participate and experience the joy and the benefits of play. This play space is full of folk games that are very suitable for children and are really useful. I myself also get to go back to my childhood feelings. Parents today are busy. They're occupied with their work. They're worried about the future. They're on their phones the whole time. And this is a reminder to put that all down, to spend time, get outside with your children and let them play and play with them. Because actually, it's not just good for the children's mental health, it's good for the mental health of the parents as well. With a focus on inclusivity, culture and nature, the event provided a diverse mix of interactive games, competitions and recreational activities. The most challenging part of providing playgrounds for children is resources. These spaces include building playgrounds, building parks, or renovating child-friendly public spaces. Currently, public spaces with child-friendly playgrounds are not discussed in urban planning. It takes a lot of time and effort to change people's mindsets. The Play Day for Children commemorates the inaugural International Day of Play, to be observed on June 11 every year. This global initiative highlights the significance and remarkable benefits of play in promoting a child's physical, mental, social, and emotional well-being. The first ASEAN International Fashion Week took place last weekend in Singapore. The event aims to promote outstanding creation from fashion designers, building bridges between ASEAN and international fashion industries. Not only is the director of the program Vietnamese, Vietnam also actively participated in the event with four talented designers and eight models. More to follow. The collection, Floating Season, by Vietnamese designer Bianca Nguyen brought novelty and diversity to the ASEAN International Fashion Week in Singapore. The idea of the floating season comes from my childhood memories, Chowdauk City and Zong Province. I want to introduce the story and the beauty of the Mekong Delta to my ASEAN friends. In the future, I want to bring this story to the whole world. The director of the ASEAN Fashion Week is also Vietnamese, Aki Kwong. His main idea for the catwalk was unity expressed in three aspects, unity of models, unified ASEAN and international designers, and a unified catwalk. When audiences watch the show, they will realize that everything converges to one point, which is the unity. 
It could lay the foundation for a prosperous life. The first ASEAN International Fashion Week brought together 40 designers from ASEAN and many other countries around the world including the US, South Korea, China, Australia, Argentina, and Hungary. The show featured more than 40 selected models from countries in the ASEAN region. The purpose of these two uh, platforms is to give a rising talents of fashion designers in Asia and models and creatives to go onto an international level. So it's helping the whole fashion community of ASEAN to come together and move them to a next level of being onto the international platform of fashion. With the successful launch of the first event, the ASEAN International Fashion Week will be held annually with the venue being Singapore or another ASEAN member country. Built as cultural heritage with international integration and development, the Hue International Art Festival Week 2024 opened at Gyeongchung Palace in Hue City. A royal gastronomy event was held at Chungsang Palace, one of the 20 most popular attractions of the Nguyen Dynasty capital, to introduce Hue unique cuisine. Visitors enjoy a buffet with about 37 traditional Hue dishes. Nightly art performances are held at the Hue Citadel, Taiping Palace, and Tiofun Garden. This year, Hue International Art Fashion Week Festival Week has attracted nearly 30 art troops from France, Belgium, Spain, Canada, Japan, China, South Korea, and Vietnam. Coming up next in our war news. UN Secretary Security Council's adopt a ceasefire resolutions aimed in Gaza. And Baghdad Historical Ottoman Era District undergoes major renovations. The UN Security Council on Tuesday adopted a historic resolution calling for an immediate, full, and comprehensive ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. The resolution was adopted with 14 votes in favor, no votes against, and only one abstention. The resolution includes a three-phase process, as in the ceasefire agreement announced by U.S. President Joe Biden earlier. The Security Council calls on Israel and Hamas to implement the terms of the resolution without delay and without conditions. The Palestinian president has welcomed the UN Security Council's vote on a ceasefire proposal in Gaza, saying it is an important step toward ending the bloodshed for the Palestinian people. Hamas said it accepted the UN Security Council resolutions on the ceasefire the withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza and the exchange of hostages. Is committed to these goals. The Russian Defense Ministry said on Tuesday that the Russian and Belarusian militaries have begun the second stage of tactical nuclear exercises taking place in Russia. As part of the exercise units of the armed forces of the Russian Federation, and the Republic of Belarus will be trained in the use of non-strategic nuclear weapons. According to Russian Defense Ministry, the exercise is aimed at ensuring that the soldiers and military equipment of the two countries are ready to protect their sovereignties and territorial integrity. For its part, Belarus asserted that it is a peaceful country and that the exercise is not aimed at causing tensions in regional security issues. From this year onwards, Vun 11 will be celebrated at the Air National Day of Play, a special occasion to celebrate the importance of play. This is an initiative of Vietnam and 12 other countries. On March 25th this year in New York, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the draft resolution proposed by Vietnam to make June 11th every year the International Day of Play. A total of 138 countries in all regions have co-sponsored the resolution. The UNICEF and the UNESCO expressed their support for the initiative and pledged to actively participate in associated activity, supporting the spirit of the resolution. Iraq had embarked on a project to renovate Baghdad Ottoman era street in the hope of reviving its ancient glory and attracting new visitors. The renovation focuses on the exterior of buildings and their facades, including restoration from the effect of salt, moisture, and leaks. More in the following story.
This restoration area runs from the banks of the Tigris River and its adjacent alleys, to the historical Al Rashid Street and Al Khalafa Square, describing it as the beating heart of Baghdad. It includes the Kushla clock, started by Ottoman governor Memd Namak Pasha, and a 19th-century landmark in the center of Old Baghdad, on the site of Al Razafa, a historically significant area considered the foundation of numerous palaces and sites that date back to the Abbasid Caliphate, the buildings are mostly heritage buildings. Even if there are new buildings, they are within the heritage area. The restoration is done using heritage materials, as well as aged materials such as brushed bricks, even the rainwater drainage pipes coming down from the roof, bear the historical character. They use the old shape. The windows remain in the old traditional style. The work includes all the buildings overlooking the street, the square with its facades, the street and the square itself, and the works associated with these facades that require intervention to ensure their maintenance and restoration. The works aim to align with and recreate the historical sites in the style of Islamic architecture. Many plans and archives of previous restoration work were destroyed during the Iraq War in 2003. The spokesman for the municipality of Baghdad, Mohammed al rubey said the project covers the historic center of Baghdad, a rectangular area of around 6 kilometers. This 6 kilometers from the banks of the Tigris River and the adjacent street and alleys, Al Rashid Street, Al Khalafa Square. This rectangle is the historical center of Baghdad. It is the beating heart of Baghdad. It is the city center and downtown of Baghdad. Around 80% of the project is now complete and the reopening of the area is slated for mid-June, according to Ali Tariq, executive director of the Association of Iraqi Banks financing the project. And now let's continue with the weather forecast. And that's it for this hour on VTV News. To rewatch our program, you can log on to vtvgo.vn or download a mobile application VTVGO. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.